Hello everyone, let's talk about project two. So the second project is going to be a found object portrait. In fact, two found object portraits, one of you and one of a more famous person, somebody, or maybe you are famous, I don't know, but uh, the second portrait will be somebody who is in the public eye, who is famous for, you know, um, you know, maybe they're a figure from history, maybe you're a history buff, uh, maybe it's someone from pop culture that you admire, uh, or maybe it's someone you don't admire. Um, anyway, what we're focused on with this project is shape, the element of shape, and how to create contrasting shapes in your work. So, uh, we're going to uh, really take a look at geometric versus biomorphic or organic shapes as we do this, right? So you're going to pick out found objects that are representative of you or um, a famous individual uh, and place them over the top of a painted background. Uh, and I say painted, I mean, you could use like, you know, cut paper or um, you know, anything else that you can think of to create a background that'll, that'll serve the purpose of, you know, of being a backdrop for these objects that make up the features of the face, right? Or parts of the body. Uh, so, um, this is inspired by an artist named Hannah Piven, uh, who makes these portraits of famous people using found objects and they, they turn out to be you know, oftentimes very comedic. I mean, it's hard to do this and not have it look whimsical. And that, so that's part of what we're doing here. Even if the subject matter is serious, uh, it's hard for a work of art to take itself too seriously when it's using found objects for the features of a face, right? So we're not only um, exploring shape, but we're taking a look at content and and style and how it affects the content, right? So it could be really heavy, um, you know, um, stuff that we're talking about, but uh, the style kind of might subvert that. Or if it is really comedic, it will amplify how funny it is, right? So um, let's take a look, shall we? So in the project folder, um, there is an instruction sheet and, um, you know, it, it, it spells the project out for you, creating two portraits, combining geometric and biomorphic shapes. Uh, and again, geometric shapes, you know what those are, squares, circles, triangles, kind of rigid, um, you know, clearly defined, um, you know, almost mechanical shapes. And then there are biomorphic shapes that are more naturally occurring, right? They're more, uh, they tend to be more curvy. Um, you know, they, they feel like they are derived from nature. And so like, uh, you know, human beings can create biomorphic shapes as well as geometric shapes and nature can create um, plenty of biomorphic shapes, but also occasionally a geometric shape uh, like a spiral or, you know, honeycomb or, you know, there are some kind of very mathematically precise uh, objects that occur in nature. Anyway, we're focused on that dialogue between the two. And so you're going to um, either, you know, uh, paint a background that has maybe some geometric and some biomorphic shapes. And you're going to pick out some objects that are either geometric or biomorphic. But you've got to have both in in each portrait to create that sense of contrast. You get the idea? Uh, and I'll, I'll show you uh, some examples here in a minute. Anyway, so materials, paint, ink, pastel, anything really, you know, cut paper, uh, whatever uh, it takes. Your backing could be Bristol board or cardboard or some other backing. It could be a canvas, like whatever you've got laying around that will serve as a kind of backdrop for these objects. I will say that um, it might be easier if your backing was a little more sturdy than Bristol board, but you know, you could take that Bristol board and put it on top of a board 
uh, to give it some solidity. Um, so just think ahead because you do have to photograph this thing once it's all put together. And uh, so you don't necessarily, you're not necessarily gluing things down. Uh, you're just like placing these objects on top. Although you could kind of, you know, you know, anchor them in place with tape or whatever, uh, just to get them to keep from moving around on you. Um, anyway, ultimately you have to take a photograph of this thing and, and it may help to be able to pick the whole thing up and take it outside and get a good photograph of it. So think ahead about what you, you know, about, you know, those logistics. Anyway, so, um, the dimensions will vary, you know, it'll really depend on the objects that you find. If you find larger objects, you may have to have a larger background. Make sense? It doesn't really make sense for you to paint the background first and then go find your objects. You've got to find the objects and then paint the background to match their scale. Does that make sense? All right. So the deliverables, uh, I need you to take a photograph of yourself that will serve as the, you know, uh, the root for your portrait that you're going to paint and assemble. Uh, I need um, a JPEG from, from the internet of the famous person that you're going to create the portrait of. Okay. And when you turn both of those in for your preliminary, you know, folder of, uh, you, know, um, uh, you know, your idea generation kind of folder, your preliminary research, when you turn those in, I want you to have a list of 10 possible symbolic objects that you could use that are meaningful, either for yourself or for that individual that you're um, um, portraying, right? So you'll type up, like you'll brainstorm in your sketchbook, you know, here are some objects that might be, you know, representative of who I am or what I'm thinking right now. And I don't want them to be objects that, you know, you just um, like, you know, I, you know, I like flowers and so everything would be flowers. You know, I would want you to maybe choose flowers because of their tie to nature or beauty, right? Um, and a lot of times, like you may be thinking, well, I'm just going to choose everything from nature because I love nature and and we're going to just make everything natural. It might be better for you to pick out some natural things and then some contrasting things, right? Human beings are uh, much more complex uh, than we give them credit for. We oftentimes will single people out and think that, you know, they're just interested in one thing. But, um, you know, I would suggest you maybe look for conflict, uh, right? Drama. Uh, even if it is going to be packaged in this kind of whimsical design, uh, doesn't mean that you can't take on more serious subject matter. Anyway, uh, so um, take like read this um, assignment handout um, thoroughly and know what you're um, uh, what you're expected to do. Again, the big focus is geometric and biomorphic. Remember, this is a design class and we're focused on the element of shape, geometric shapes and biomorphic shapes uh, and the contrast between the two. Okay, so um, and there are guidelines for the project. Um, you know, again, once you choose the objects that are meaningful and you start to assemble the thing, that'll give you an idea of the scale that you need to, you know, um, execute this at, you know, maybe you'll be lucky and it'll be, you know, 11 by 14 is a good size for you. In which case you can just use that Bristol board. Uh, or m maybe you're going to, you know, have objects that are uh, quite a bit larger and maybe you need to go find a, a big piece of cardboard and, and paint it white and then use that as, you know, your, your surface that you're working on and that you're going to place those objects on. Um, so, um, uh, you've got to think about both the, the objects and then the background that's going to kind of hold the whole thing together. Uh, I, and some of you may be like digital artists. I don't want this to turn into a big, you know, digital project. I really do want it to be found objects and with paint and you put the whole thing together and photograph it. 
if you absolutely have to use like digital software to solve a problem, I'll be okay with that. But I just don't want you to solve every problem, I, you know, uh, that way. Um, be resourceful, but don't uh, get around the problem of the materials. Um, uh, you know, I, I want you to work with the limitations of the materials. Like, uh, okay, so uh, don't just turn it into a Photoshop project, in other words. Okay, so um, let's take a look. Um, you know, there is um, a sheet of Hannock Piven portraits here that I got from his website. In fact, there's a link right here to his website, and here are some of his portraits, right? Uh, Kim Young Il, uh, you know, missiles, matches, locks, a mushroom, I suppose, for a mushroom cloud. And he's just bent some wire to form his glasses. Um, so there's not a whole lot of geometric versus biomorphic here, but there's some, right? Uh, here's Steve Jobs, right? He's got an iPhone for a body uh, and a little uh, connector for a mouth uh, and a light bulb. You know, he's an idea man. So uh, a light bulb for a nose. All right. So you start to get where I'm coming from. Like you... You need to be thinking about not just objects that would uh, make up a face, but objects that uh, are meaningful to that uh, individual. Right here's Keith Richards with a snake for a mouth and guitar strings that make up the wrinkles on his face and a snubbed out cigarette for a nose uh, and, you know, guitar picks for eyes. Um, and, you know, th this is, you know, tape from a cassette that the, that he's pulled out and made hair with. So, uh, you know, it's not just uh, stuff associated with music. He's a musician, a guitar player, uh, but he's got a snake for a mouth, right? Uh, meaning that there's, you know, um, some conflict here. It's not just about music. It's more than that, right? Okay. Um, uh, so, you know, take a look at these and look for examples of geometric and biomorphic. Like here's Einstein, right? Again, another light bulb for a nose, uh, very geometric shape, geometric, you know, kind of, uh, mechanical eyes. I'm not exactly sure what those are, but you know, the head is this kind of more loose biomorphic shape. Like he's painted it in this loose way more natural way. Uh, and then all the, the wires that form his hair and his mustache, um, uh, although they are, you know, um, made by human hands, they, they come across as more natural, more f free flowing. Uh, so again, um, be thinking about those contrasting shapes. Like here's Abe Lincoln. Um, you know, he's got um, a miniature cannon uh, for one eye and uh, an American flag on a button for the other. Uh, here's a gavel for the mouth, right? He's a lawyer. Uh, and and chains make up his beard, right? Um, uh, the reference to slavery and um, Lincoln's role in um, emancipation, right? So thoughtful objects. Here's Stephen Hawking, uh, magnifying glass... Uh, uh, glasses for his glasses. Again, another uh, light bulb for the nose. Uh, brains uh, for eyebrows. He's very smart, you know, theoretical physicist. Um, okay, so lots of geometric and then his head, his body, very biomorphic, much more loosely painted. All right. So go through these. Like here's Here's, you know, a portrait of Bill Clinton made up of colored marshmallows, right? Uh, which is a common, I guess, on his uh, body type. But uh, there's, uh, there, all of those marshmallows are circular. They're, these these are geometric shapes that make up a, you know, a biomorphic shape. His head is more naturally shaped, but each circle within it is geometric. Makes sense? So I want you to be thinking about that geometric and biomorphic. Uh, okay. 
And you've got to be resourceful when it comes to, you know, coming up with things that will make lines, uh, things that, you know, look like hair. Um, you got to go and, and hunt down the things that are going to help you uh, paint this portrait, so to speak, with objects as well as, you know, with paint. Okay, so uh, let's switch gears here and talk a bit about materials and objects. Uh, I think it makes sense for you to um, really pick out these objects first, like brainstorm what objects make sense uh, for a portrait, a self-portrait, uh, and objects that would make sense for my famous person, right? Uh, and so, um, there's, you know, everybody's got a junk drawer, uh, but as an artist, I've got, mm, you know, boxes of objects that I've collected over the years. And I don't know if you're, you know, somebody who collects things or not, but, um, start looking, you know, start in your junk drawer or, you know, start in your backyard, maybe. Uh, so. Maybe you um, are, you know, going to look in nature, right? Uh, acorns, right? Um, pine cones, little bitty pine cone that I found. Leaves, of course, right? Small ones, large ones, keep your eyes peeled. There's um, natural things like, you know, eggshells, right? Um, could be, you know, a good thing for eyes or, or even, um, you know, eggs in conjunction with acorns, um, to make big eyes, right? Um, sorry, I had to take the caps off my acorns to do that. So, um, start game planning now. Um, you know, uh, little, little toys, right? I don't, I don't know if you've got things like this laying around, but you know, little hands from an action figure from one of my kids toys, um, um, little army men, right? I don't know if you guys can see that very well, right? There are millions of little toys out there that could, you know, um, help you make meaning. Um, you know, toys are, are kind of, you know, uh, a, a quick way to, um, make meaningful elements. Um, you know, little, found these little football helmets in my junk drawer. Um, uh, and of course, um, there are, you know, little doodads like you might find in the garage, if you've got a garage, right? Uh, nuts, bolts, washers. Uh, I even found this little guy in my toolbox, this, you know, little bitty wrench. A cup hook, I could imagine, would be a good, like, eyebrow, possibly. So... Um, a key is a symbolic object, right? Again, tools, uh, like these clips, paper clips and alligator clips. Um, and, you know, again, toys like little animals. There's a spider. Um, I've got sheep and dogs and horses and cattle, um, you know, um, toys are just, you know, fun and easy and could be very meaningful. You know, every animal has some sort of symbolic meaning. I just realized I have paint on my finger. Sorry about that. So, um, there's, you know, things like, that's 
I thought fishing bobbers would make great eyes potentially, but only if it's meaningful for that person. You know, maybe you you know, um, you're doing a a, a self portrait, and you know maybe you don't necessarily fish, but you find meaning in the idea of you know um, fishing. Like uh, maybe the fish is symbolic of something, and the fishing you know lure bobber you know could be a hint at that. Who knows? Um, maybe, you know, electronics. You know, if you're looking for a geometric shape, uh, I, you know, some of you might even not know what that is, but that's, a, that's an old floppy disk, um, you know, for computers, like saving files. Uh, wires, of course, are very helpful, you know, elements for creating line in a project like this. And, of course, we've already seen... Hannock Piven used those um, light bulbs, um, and of course the size of the light bulb will matter. Uh, here's wire, right? Uh, uh, you could certainly make, you know, line with that. You know, objects like that's a that's a um, TR uh, S um, connector for guitars right speaking of guitars there's like again guitar picks if you're a musician maybe but again if you, if you are a musician go beyond just music um right i was thinking like with music like maybe um you've got sheet music uh that could serve as part of the background like you could maybe cut out um shapes uh with music notation on them right um, okay, so go take a look, find meaningful objects. Uh, I've even got like, you know, uh, x-ray vision glasses. I don't know why I have those. Um, you know, uh, you collect things over the, over the years. Uh, here's a mouse trap, right? Uh, I made art with mouse traps for uh, a while there and I thought, you know, that might be something that could be meaningful what, what if you had uh, you know here are some toy lips that were in my in the you know kind of junk drawer magic junk drawer uh what if you know you had a you know what does that mean to have lips over a mouse trap right what does that mean could be kind of interesting uh you know here's a, a bit of hose uh, here's a pressure gauge, like maybe, you know, if your mouth, if your mouth were a pressure gauge, what would that mean? Um, I'm obsessed with tin cans. I use a lot of tin cans in my work. Maybe that's what I would use for my self-portrait because cans, like to me, are uh, these kind of magic objects. They contain things, right? Uh, or in this case, they don't contain them very well. Uh, you know, here's a sardine can. Uh, how would I work that in, potentially? Again, I, I'm kind of obsessed with uh, kind of uh, containers and using them in my work to talk about um, the interior side of things versus the exterior side of things. Um, you know, I, you know, our you know our bodies are kind of like that. You know, like there's the outside and then there's the inside. Um, part of me right and everybody has that kind of like and so containers kind of create dialogue about that sort of thing you know um and so like, i want you to start thinking about how you're going to pull all this together like maybe i'm going to do a self-portrait i'm always kind of at war with myself maybe i get these army men right uh but i you know i've got a whole bag full of them uh what if i did a portrait of you know army men coming out of my head and uh, swarming around me, right? Uh, so that, that it's not an idea of war outside of me, but, you know, from like some sort of internal conflict, right? Makes sense. Um, what would you do? Um, uh, I want to, I've been talking way too long here, but I'm going to bring this to a close by uh, showing you um, a student example, right? Right, so down here, uh, Don Park, uh, one of my former students, um, 
did a self-portrait of her and you know she she's an artist um but didn't and i really wish you guys wouldn't use art materials it's almost too easy i'll let you get away with using maybe one art material but then the rest of it has to be something else okay is that fair um anyway like don um is like many of us like a little anxious and like she's got a, a pill for a nose which you know uh, with this kind of worried look, you know, her eyebrows are kind of, like, you know, uh, pin caps that are kind of askew, and she bent some wire uh, for her glasses. Uh, so, you know, but like if you just have one really meaningful object, um, it could really tell the story well, right? Um, and, you know, again, she's got very loose kind of uh, biomorphic shapes making up the figure and then that real uh, uh, crisp geometric shape for the nose it really stands out here is her portrait of salvador dali like here's the original dali portrait and the artist salvador dali and here's her found object portrait of him um and like she's picked out these kind of gears for his eyes you know uh, if you if you look at Dali's eyes, then you, maybe you can you can imagine um, what's going on in his head from that expression, and maybe that's her interpretation. Like he's got a mechanical mind that's always going, always producing ideas. Uh, so uh, I want you to not only do a meaningful self-portrait, geometric, biomorphic, meaningful found objects, but then find somebody from you know history or from from pop culture or or from wherever that's well known that you can um again find objects that are meaningful to their personality and assemble um a, a portrait of them okay so two of these get your objects once you've determined what objects make sense then paint the background and i say paint the background like you know you can you can use things like um you know like i don't know if you have craft fur laying around for hair potentially but look i mean if you tear up cardboard you can get uh the insides you know textured cardboard could be really interesting um like i mentioned something like printed like sheet music could be helpful uh, for background elements of course colored paper you can you know cut shapes from colored paper rather than painting if you if you want to do that and of course uh, there is good old-fashioned acrylic paint would be excellent for this or if you don't have acrylic paint uh, you could use your bristol board and um and watercolor uh, like um it, uh, that would work it doesn't have to look exactly like um anybody else's like uh you could also instead of using bristol board right remember good old tried and true bristol board is um uh, kind of our bread and butter uh, but if you wanted to use something like cardboard um you could you know cut out i'm using a small piece of cardboard but you could get a larger piece of cardboard uh, uh, keep in mind, like if I were to paint this, like if, if I were to get like, you know, some house paint uh, and paint this so that it's a solid color, it could be white, it could be, you know, another color, um, you know, paint one side of it. And uh, if you're worried about it warping, you can always turn the cardboard over to the other side. You can either uh, fill this with you know your your same paint to even out the tension on both sides or sometimes it's enough just to paint an x on the back side to keep that that tension uh on the back so it doesn't warp as much okay so um whatever you can figure out to to use as that um, backing do it okay all right so uh there you have it uh go find objects that are meaningful, um, assemble them uh, into two found object portraits that focus on geometric and biomorphic shapes. All right, good luck.